Okay, today we're going to be talking about proper procedure when brazing. And for those of you who don't know, brazing is the joining of two metals uh, with both heat and a filler material. And in our industry, we generally see copper, brass, and aluminum most often. But today we're going to be dealing with copper. Um, and these are for uh, refrigeration lines. And so I thought I'd go over a few key points here on both setup and procedure. So um, one thing, we, we use oxyacetylene torch sets, and it's important that we get our pressures dialed in for those correctly. So on our oxygen regulator, we're going to set between 12 and 14 PSI, and on our acetylene, we're going to do between 6 and 7 PSI, and that's going to allow a nice neutral flame for us. Um, and our nitrogen, nitrogen is the most important part. Anytime we're brazing, we have to be flowing nitrogen to make sure we don't get oxidation on the inside of the pipe because uh, that oxidation can make its way through. We're going to set between 12 and 14 PSI and on our acetylene we're going to do between 6 and 7 PSI and that's going to allow a nice neutral flame for us. Um, and our nitrogen, nitrogen is the most important part. Anytime we're brazing we have to be flowing nitrogen to make sure we don't get oxidation on the inside of the pipe because uh, that oxidation can make its way through our 410A refrigerant, which is what we see in most of our residential AC and heat pump systems, it, it acts as a flushing agent and it takes that carbon buildup inside of those pipes if we don't purge with nitrogen and it brings it to places where we don't want it to be like liquid line dryers and screens and strainers and it can also hurt our compressor. Uh, so we're going to flow nitrogen at a rate of 2 to 3 PSI anytime we have heat on that pipe. Um, and the one thing I really want to go over is, if you can imagine this is our inner pipe and this is our outer pipe with a cup, people tend to think that by concentrating the heat right on the edge of this cup that they're getting a good braze joint, when in reality we want that filler material to flow all the way through and make as much contact with as much surface area and bond those two pipes as much as possible. So we're going to really focus on concentrating our heat at the back end of the cup because wherever our heat is, that's where our filler material is going to flow. And the idea is to get the pipe hot enough that by touching the filler material to the pipe, it actually melts it. We don't want to melt our filler material with our direct flame. So our goal is not to do this. This is called a cold cap. Our goal is to flow all of our filler material to the back end of the cup and I think when we do this correctly, and I show you the difference between the two pipes that we're going to do, you'll see that on the one we do correctly, that filler material makes its way all the way through and spills out a little bit on the back end. And so, yeah, that's what we're going to do today. We're going to go ahead and braze two different pipes. And one, we're going to do the correct way. We're going to flow nitrogen. We're going to sand the joint down. Uh, we're going to have our pressure set right here. Uh, 12 on the oxygen and I'm going to go ahead and do 6 on the acetylene side and we are going to see the difference because we're going to cut the pipes open at the end and unfold them and you'll be able to see exactly what we're talking about here and why it's important to do this so that our customers get a long lasting piece of equipment that we install. Okay so we're going to go ahead and braze a couple of pipes. We're going to start with this one in this one I'm going to do completely correct. I'm going to have, I have my nitrogen hose up here which is going to be flowing through this pipe at all times while I have heat on it. I've got my joint sanded down and I'm going to distribute the heat evenly. I'm going to start on this pipe to allow the heat to travel to the back end of the cup and then I'm going to be heating that cup and as I put this filler material into this cup it's going to flow back to where the heat is and we're going to get maximum surface area throughout the back end of this joint as we heat that up. So I'm going to go ahead and start brazing. Like I said I've got my nitrogen flowing right now. Get my flame the way I want it to be. Nice neutral flame. Like I said I'm just going to start by heating this inner pipe first. Allow the heat to make its way back. Now we're going to start heating the back end of this cup and this is 7 8 diameter pipe so it's going to take a little bit longer to heat up 
And I'm gonna wait till we're just about cherry red before I start adding filler material in. It'll flow just like butter if it's done right. If it's not done right, it'll glob up on the surface and you won't get any infiltration. So I think we're just about there. So I'm gonna start adding. There we go. Perfect. And like I mentioned before, the cap is the least important part. The most important part is that we get maximum infiltration into this joint. But I'm gonna go ahead, now that I'm done, I'm gonna reduce the amount of heat on the outside edge of this, and I'm gonna put a cap on there just for more, a little more insurance. Nice rounded cap. Okay, that is all done. We're gonna go ahead and cut this pipe open, but first we're gonna do the other pipe, which we're gonna be doing completely incorrect. Okay, so this is the uh, copper pipe that we're gonna do incorrectly. Uh, like I said on the last one, I was flowing nitrogen at that two to three PSI range the whole time I was doing that braze joint, and I was focusing the heat in the proper places well on this one, I am gonna focus all the heat right on this lip, and I'm gonna create a cold cap on the outside of this. And now this cold cap, it might pass a pressure test, an initial pressure test on the system, and it could be two weeks, and it could be two years from now, but it will eventually leak, and it's not correct. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. And how I do this, you'll notice that it's gonna glob up on the surface more. It's not going to pull into the joint like the last one did, <clears throat> and that's what's gonna cause all of our problems. So the combination of less heat and where I'm focusing that heat is what's gonna create the issue. And on top of that, when we're all done, we're gonna cut these pipes open, and I'll show you all the oxidation inside of this pipe. And that oxidation can cause all sorts of problems. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay. Said, focusing everything that I have right on this edge here. And the goal when you're brazing is to get the pipe hot enough that by touching your filler material to the pipe, it actually melts it. But in this case, I'm just gonna melt the filler material on top of the pipe using my flame. And this is generally what I see when we see situations where we have a leak. Okay, so we're all done there. Let's go ahead and cut these pipes open. Okay, so here we have our two pipes and they have been cut open. And this one over here, as you can see, we had nitrogen flowing through this one the whole time and you can still see it looks like copper. Uh, there's no oxidation on the inside of this pipe. Um, there's a little bit of discoloration, but that's simply from heat. And over here, this is the one we did incorrectly and we've got a bunch of carbon buildup on the inside. And what's gonna happen with our 410A refrigerant, which is what's in most of our residential uh, AC and heat pump systems now, 
acts as a flushing agent. It's going to flush this to points in the system that we don't want it to get to, like expansion valves, strainers, liquid line dryers, etc. And it can also give a compressor a hard time if it bonds with the lubricating agents that are inside the system. So, and the other thing that's going to be kind of hard to notice is I have got my filler material. You can see it made its way all the way through on the one where I distributed the heat evenly throughout the cup. And down along this ridge line, there's a nice line of that filler material. Whereas on this one, again, you're not going to be able to see this, but I could actually pull this pipe apart with pliers. That filler material probably never made its way past right here at the ridge line. So this, like I said, could pass a pressure test, but who knows how long it'll take before we have a leak there. So this is the proper way to do our brazing, and our customers are going to have a much better system after years and years of use if we do things the right way.